profits on seller world now. Quarter one was a steady quarter for them and management has maintained their revenue growth guidance of 15 to 17 percent in FY25. To discuss in detail about their quarter one performance and business outlook, Gaurav Rathod, the MD of Cello World, is joining us now. Mr. Rathod, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Well, it was a decent quarter and you have maintained your growth guidance. I wanted to understand in this growth, have you factored in the soda lime glassware expansion that you're looking at? Also wanted to understand what is the total addressable market of this segment and will it be margin accretive for you from this year itself? Uh, so yes, uh, I, we have factored in the soda lime plant as well, uh, which will uh, you know start giving us revenue from the second uh, uh, half of the year. Uh, it will of course start giving us good revenues. Uh, uh, it might not. Uh, it of course will be still uh, you know positive in terms of uh, EBITDA, uh, though the depreciation in the first year will be slightly higher. But I think it will be offset by the revenue gains that we get uh, you know in an overall business in two. And what is that revenue addition that you're expecting? And what is the total addressable market here? Because your peers are getting into the borosilicate glass market. So wanted to understand the differential here in terms of margins as well. So I think uh, margins are in line with our uh, crockery, the opalware business that we currently do. And uh, it's it's not borosilicate, it is uh, soda lime glass, which is slightly different. Uh, this is mainly used for drinking glasses uh, and uh, other tableware items. And uh, this market is actually much bigger than the borosilicate market. Uh, so currently in India, uh, according to our estimates, it's about 2,000 odd crores, uh, which is purely <laughs> So for us, it's import substitution uh, more of. So I think for us, it's only a 10% market share uh, gain that we are looking at through uh, this capacity addition. Okay. Uh well, uh, Gaurav, you know, what happened to your writing instrument segment? Uh, it's around 17% of your total revenues. It was down 5% year on year. Uh, what led to that downtick and what is the demand looking like? So it has been uh, uh, actually for all uh, stationary makers, uh, more pen than stationary. Stationary still has done decently well uh, because we are purely a pen uh, manufacturer. Uh, so we've seen across the board uh, that demand was a little tepid uh, during this quarter. Uh, but we don't see this happening, uh, you know, it has, July has been much better and so has August been till now. So I guess uh, it's picking up steam. Uh, also for us, we are adding a lot of stationary items also in this particular segment. Uh, so growing, going forward, you know, we'll be much uh, more diversified as a portfolio. Uh, so which would uh, limit the risk as well of uh, such a quarter. So when you say diversified as a portfolio, are you going to look to expand as much as, say, the DOMS of the world? Uh, we'll slowly get there. DOMS is a more diversified portfolio in the stationery and the, and the art uh, deco uh, kind of portfolio. So I think slowly we'll uh, be entering into categories that we feel uh, have good margins and which have uh, you know, good potential for growth. Mm. So you spoke about uh, entering into products which will see better margins and good potential for growth. Your margins have been around that 25% mark. Is that something that you would maintain? And what is the product pipeline that you're seeing? In that 15 to 17%, have you taken into consideration the newer products as well which will come in? Yes, so 15 to 17% uh, covers our entire product portfolio. Uh, mainly the glass uh, plant is a completely new segment that we're entering. Uh, apart from that, uh, you know, we keep coming out with uh, newer product lines in our existing categories. Uh, so that will continue to happen. Uh, of course, I think I think uh, you know our uh, margins have been have been steady, and I think that's uh, something that we really uh, pride ourselves in, and uh, you know, make sure that uh, you know that doesn't come in at the expense. So revenue doesn't come in at the expense of margins. Uh, so that is why you've seen a slightly tepid growth uh, this uh, quarter, but. Going forward, I think, uh, you know, when the festive season kicks in, uh, you know, things look, things are looking much better. Okay. All right. The other segment which looked interesting was actually a molded furniture and allied products segment. It yeah. was up 16% year on year. Uh, tell us what exactly does it comprise of? What, have, what were the margins that you recorded within this segment vis-a-vis -vis, uh, what you did same time last year? And what's driving growth there? And are you expecting this kind of double-digit growth to continue considering that that's been the key driver this quarter uh, so this quarter though uh, it's a it's a small percentage of our entire revenue uh, but this quarter uh, you know we we do also do coolers uh, in this segment and this okay. was a fantastic season for uh, coolers as you know the heat wave was 
pretty strong in throughout India. Uh, so driven primarily by coolers. And of course, uh, furniture also did decently well. Though our long-term uh, perspective on this is going to be a little more in the in the single to you know just uh, uh, you know in the early teens kind of uh, growth uh, that we look at uh, you know over the year. Hmm. Um, uh, Mr. Rathod, I wanted to understand what is the ad spends as a percentage of sales right now. The last numbers that I have, it's around one point three percent for you, but that compares with peers like Borussia at seven point seven percent, Laopala at three percent. I wanted to understand if you'll scale that higher because your distribution network is also quite strong. So, what does that do to this number and your market share as well? What is it currently? How do you grow that? So, I think uh, for us uh, as a strategy, we are uh, going to be spending about three percent of revenue uh, over this year and would probably continue to do that over the next two to three years. Uh, so, at a sort at that at the scale of business that we are, uh, that gives us a good amount of. Uh, you know money to kind of spend on uh, uh, on ads and uh, other marketing activities so i think uh, it's it's important and we realize that uh, though we've always uh, uh, you know spent over many many years and over decades uh, to build a brand like this but of course for the recall value uh, we will continue to spend <coughs> and the market share what is that number market share for us is is a very difficult uh, segment actually because it is so <laughs> fragmented uh, mm -hmm. so you know uh, across our different uh, businesses it's different uh, so so it's a, it's a very difficult uh, to gauge that because there's a lot of unorganized competition as well uh, within a lot of our plastic and houseware categories uh, but right. approximately you know it's about 10 to 12% of the overall houseware category okay this 737 crores that you raised via qip um, have the funds been deployed uh, what is the plan in terms of deployment if not so uh, the loan that was on the books has been paid back. Uh, so I think that's pretty much done. And uh, of course, we are setting up a new facility for our plastic houseware and steelware products. Uh, so that deployment will happen over a, over a year's time, uh, year's frame. So I think uh, uh, pretty much that was the reason for the QIP uh, in the first place. And I think uh, we are on target to you know deploying all the funds within the next uh, you know eight to twelve months. Okay. All right, uh, Gaurav, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's Cello World. That stock is at around 889 odd rupees. We need to take a short break. But up next, we have an interesting conversation. Everstone's MD, Arjun O'Broy, and head private equity India, Panchim Mukim, will join in to discuss their PE investments in the healthcare space and the overall environment. Stay tuned.